what I'll be trying to talk today about is, uh, I mean, I, try, I wanted to talk about enterprise architecture of, of, of a telco and how it changes when you start going for a DevOps as, a, as an organization. But I decided that actually we'll try to explain why that is even needed. Because I think that this is not a common statement that this is actually even needed. And I'll try to explain why, why I believe it is. And uh, why, I don't know if you have seen the presentation from PanNet, Stefan Schnitter, he was talking a lot about DevOps processes and I'll try to explain a little bit about that. So, <clears throat> so this is a slide that I stole directly from Stefan Schnitter. Um, basically how they are developing and operating a telco cloud in there. And this, this is a very simple, very simple thing. It's basically describing that the main process that they have and the key word here is process, is continuous integration, continuous delivery. And then they, underneath, that, con that process controls the <coughs> uh, management and orchestration, test automation, and maybe in, in the future Kubernetes when, whenever they actually comes. Uh, the most important part of it is that this is a process. This is not technology. This is not a project. It's none other than a process. And I would like you to think for a moment how many fundamental processes do we as an or, or, well, industry in a sense, but well, telcos being the main, the main provider of services to the, to the end customers, how many real processes do we have to manage change? Because uh, all I see is projects. I see a project of an upgrade. I see a project of implementing a service. I see a project of, and you can name all of them, I mean, as many as you want. I actually don't see processes that much. And that is something that needs to change. Uh, because if you really want to have continuous integration and continuous delivery and deployment and testing and all of that, which, which actually comes out from this very simple picture, then you can't have projects anymore, or they cannot be the main thing that drives the, 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 the life of an organization. And that actually has so many implications on, on things that, uh, that uh, how we operate as an industry. Um, I think not that uh, it's, let's, let's put it this way, it's, um, you cannot hear it enough. So that's my speech today. Um, this is a, a very simple model that I tried to create to explain a little bit what choices do telcos have today, maybe what kind of choices they will have tomorrow. It's actually a very simple model in the in the IT world, this, is, this would be an obvious picture, actually. But in a sense, it isn't an obvious picture for the telco world, if you really think about it. Let's check if this works. Yeah, it does. So um, if, you, if you think about the, the, the whole, it's like it should be the, the, whole, the whole set of options should be, should be real for the telco. I mean, we should have, for example, stuff like uh, hardware and public telco cloud. I mean, it has, I, I've heard about two, in theory at least, in some places of the world. Um, so most of the world, most of the operators actually can't really use it, so not really an option. We go software, software as a service. I mean, I've heard about the first Amazon Web Services based EPC. I don't know, maybe a week ago or two weeks ago. So if you really think about it, it's also not an option because I mean, maybe on a, not everybody has an AWS in their country, and then then there's an, other privacy laws and, and all the other stuff that's related to to actually having that. Uh, another problem. Okay, then we've got uh, the process. And this is, this is, I will be really focusing today, the process. So can we have a public telco cloud-based process? Like, continue, like in Amazon Web Services, you've got continuous integration almost baked in. Um, you can use a lot of the, the capabilities that are there, monitoring and all of that stuff that's all based on the process that's internally built in. Well, since we have, don't, don't have public telco cloud, we don't have that, that well, <laughs> possibility. Um, then we've got the, the, the buy. Well, the, no, actually, let's start with make. So with hardware, generic, programmable, I mean, yeah, in theory, but it's all vendor-based, which means, well, here we've got buy. Uh, software, how many telcos are software creators? Well, I think I know one. And it's, a, and it's still a complex, so SoftBank comes to my head. I don't know, maybe you know more? That's a, anybody works in a telco that actually has software production internally? That would be a surprise. Um, so that we, we've got, we, this is not really an option today as well. Uh, and then we've got the, 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 the process. And uh, we, in, th in, in, our, in our life, have been, as, a, as an industry, have been used very much to this. Uh, this, this, is the, this is the path that 
that uh, we have used as an industry. So there was a vendor that he sold us basically everything. So the hardware, the software, and the process, if there was any. Typically, it was actually a project. But, yeah. but is it really a choice? I mean, if I, if I think about it, even if we had the possibility of having this thing, so public telco cloud-based um, hardware, software, and process, does it actually solve anything? Because if you really want to build a new service, if you really want to do the thing that was shown uh, at the beginning, continuous integration, continuous delivery, and the test automation underneath, and the, and the Kubernetes management, and Mano, whatever, um, if you really want to have all that, uh, is, is this enough that you have it only in, your, on, in the cloud that you rent? Is it enough? No, it isn't. Because you've got legacy. <laughs> so who, ha who has no legacy? So, I mean, I don't know a company that doesn't... I mean, in many cases, the moment you deploy something, that's already legacy. That's, that's more or less the, the, the state of the industry, to be honest. So we have legacy, which means that this problem, oh, this one, that's going to be biting our back behinds for long years to come. And basically the message is, we either fix it or learn how to fix it ourselves as, a, as, as organizations, and, and then we profit or we don't. And then every single time there will be the statement, but we don't want to have vendor lock-in. The vendor lock-in isn't because we have hardware or we have software. This is not where vendor lock-in where, where it comes from. Vendor lock-in comes from here because they are owners of our process. And th the moment we can, we can get rid of that, this is the moment when we start talking about completely different relationships with vendors. Because if they follow our process, if they are doing a good job, doing the products that we want, we create new services that are good and we provide value, everything is good. If it stops being this way, well, we stop. It's as simple as that. Of course, implementation of that takes a little bit of time, takes a little, a little bit of money. Uh, Stefan was talking about this, how long it took for PanNet. Like you can, I think, two and a half years. This was a transformation, so they started with a huge, huge project, actually, and then now they have multiple products. They have multiple DevOps teams. They have, they, they have a, a full continuous integration delivery pipeline. That's a big, big change in the organization. And this is something that I think is not really understood by, by a lot of people in, in, in the industry, that this is, not, this is actually not a technology problem that we have. We, we, in this conference even, the thing that we talk about is, is yeah, this technology has this, this has that, this, this has this interface, I mean, all, all good. But the reality is that the, the, our wishes, our, our dreams of having vendor independence, is not based on the fact that we control which piece we buy. We, we control the process. This is where the independence comes from. And in order to do that, and <laughs> like if you, if you look at it, this is a lot of stuff to talk about. We need to talk about governance, for example, to change the projects. I mean, get rid of the goddamn projects. I mean, if you really want to do continuous integration, continuous delivery, and automated testing on end-to-end, -end, with a project, I mean, good luck with that. Because, and, and you know why it's impossible? Because if you think that there's, a, there's typically an EPC guy, there's an, uh, there's an IP networking guy, there's some brand guy, if, you, if each of them has to create an end-to-end -end test, end-to-end uh, -end, uh, test environment even, it's much more costly than the budget that the guy possesses. That's the state of the matters. So, and, and there is no option of actually merging those budgets. Because they, well, why would they do that? They, this is their budget. They have to do their work. So if, if we are always working on a project base and there's nobody that actually has to take care of it end to end, it's going to end up, and actually I'm going to take a look at the timer. Um, yeah, 10 minutes, not bad. Um, then it end up, ends up with, with basically somebody saying, well, I'm not going to participate, and, and then the whole thing falls apart. Because this, this requires continuous in, uh, well, improvement, but basically continuous money in a sense. So we need to start here, actually, so in governance. We need to start talking about continuous funding, get rid of projects and put products in there. So a product is, for example, end-to-end -end te automated testing environment. Creation, management, support, all of this stuff. This is, we, need, we need money for it. It's not going to happen magically. Uh, we need to start 
talking about portfolios. So at the moment, if you look at projects, for example, um, I, I'm working with, uh, with, with different companies in the market, and a typical thing I see is, well, we've built our, our telco cloud. We have a deadline on six services almost at the same time to be deployed on that telco cloud. How many ops people do you have? Four. How much automation have you got? Zero. So how is that supposed to work? So how many processes do you expect to be involved in, the operational processes? Well, 35 is the thing that we typically take into account. Okay, and how much, so you said zero automation, which means that every single service that comes will actually bother these people every single time about these topics. Well, yeah, we didn't think about it that much. <laughs> so, well, start talking about portfolios, start talking about what is the first thing that comes in, what is the second thing that comes in, and put a proper prioritization on stuff. This is the thing that needs to happen. This is nothing, and I am absolutely underlining this one, this is nothing a technology person will solve themselves. This is a fundamental change to the organization. And I don't see people talking about it here. I really don't. And I, by the way, don't understand why. Um, the second thing is, um, well, skills, it's easy, right? We, we talk a lot about software-oriented, internal capability. Um, I think this is more or less an agreement that at least somewhat the skills have to come back to the telco. Ten years ago, they were removed, they went to the vendors, now they have to come back. And I'm not saying that they have to come back to create software completely, but at least to understand the continuous integration delivery, those pipelines, you actually need, you need the skills of, a, of, of a software, basically, at least understanding the process. And this is the second, the real big, uh, the real uh, big second change that, that needs to happen. That's around processes. I mean, of course, DevOps, and everybody has a, like, a certain understanding of what DevOps is about. But, uh, but we try to explain it here. So, for example, how many services nowadays have a goal of having self-service? So, I mean, I, I've seen self-service, people claiming that have, they have some kind of self-service in, in particular use cases for the last three years in, in, uh, in this very conference, by the way. And uh, if you look at it, yeah, I can click there to change, I don't know, from 50, mega, uh, 50 megabytes to, to, to 100 for one day. And he's like, and that's the self-service you're doing? I mean, so how, what about the purchasing? I mean, the credit card, the Amazon Web Services, where is that? I mean, we, the, the, this, all of that is actually possible, but we're not doing it. And which means that the, the stuff that we do as an organization is we spend so many resources on actually selling stuff, which actually could be used completely differently. We could be spending that money not on selling stuff, because there's 100,000 salesmen running around, but basically improving the services and building new stuff, new value. I mean, th there are presentations on what we could be doing, but we are so busy doing the selling that we, selling, that we are not really able to do any of the, of the new cool things, that even the vendors are coming up and saying, okay, this is a good idea, why, not? why aren't you doing it? So, um, that's, that's a goal, that has to be a goal. And again, that's not gonna be a project because no, 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 not a single project can say, I want the self-service on my, all of my services. I mean, go, no way, it's gonna be red. It simply has to be a certain goal of a portfolio and then of every single product that is under the portfolio. That's the only way of doing that. Um, SLAs between the different teams. Um, at the moment, if you have a project, typically the project doesn't talk about SLA. The SLA is not a problem of a project. The, pro the problem of, of the operations is the SLA. But if, if, you talk about, if you talk about the project that's supposed to bring huge changes to the network, to the, to the build, to, the, to everything, like for example the CICD thing, so how on earth can we talk about operational SLAs if the project doesn't talk about them at all? Because it typically doesn't. I mean, maybe in your organization it does, but from my, my experiences are, no, sorry, never, never in the scope. Or <laughs> the first thing that was cut out of scope because they, they lacked resources or time or whatever. Um, release train, so continuous releases, continuous improvement, um, critical. Uh, and the roadmap, published roadmap that we see, that we understand what's going on. Very, very important. And the, the, the last part, um, organization. Um, we, as, a, as an industry, we are saying that we have a very big skill problem. Uh, we do but we are not doing anything to actually address that. Um, the only way of addressing that problem is actually not to hire now a hundred different people, randomly assign them to different teams that have software skills, and then now like somehow, magically, our organizations become software-oriented. That's actually not true. Um, 
funnily enough, when I speak to different organizations, I mean, in a consulting company in the end, um, I speak to different organizations, and when I go into those organizations and I, I, I talk to the, 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 the people that are either ops or dev, they actually know all this. That's actually the funny part. They, they, they really know all this. But there's typically this like, management layer, middle layer, that's blocking all of that. Because they personally will lose um, power. That is the problem of the change. Because we need to start talking about small product teams. We need to start talking about mul no multi-teaming, zero. Like, at the moment, the best people are in 17 different projects. Typically, that means you are on 17 different meetings every week. So the, the amount of time you have to work is, I don't know, three minutes every week or something like this. Um, unless people talk, um, uh, say that meetings are actually working, but I fundamentally disagree with that statement. Um, Cross-functional. Uh, <laughs> This is, this is uh, at the moment, we have domain, and the domain is playing around with itself. Well, th what we're talking about with cloudification is actually a cross-domain problem, by definition. So why are we still having teams that are almost solely single domain? That has to change. Um, and this, this enabler ecosystem, this is, this is when you have products. Some of the products will be um, towards the towards the customer. Some of them will be towards internal. So Telco Cloud is a good example. That's an internal enabler. It, allow, it should allow other people to do stuff that's, that's new, fast, cool, etc. cetera. Um, that doesn't really happen that much. That typically is, again, a project, very difficult to, difficult to execute. And uh, technology here, I think, is only, if you really think about the problem, so cloud native. So talking about pushing your, net, your vendors towards cloud native. So not only, not only purchasing, because purchasing, of course, is another problem, but simply telling them, look, this is my process. You have to fit in this process, and I, I will buy only stuff next year that follows this process. Then you can have a chance of, of being my partner, my, my chosen vendor. Otherwise, I don't even want to talk to you. This is how it should, it's, it should be done, because that also gives clear guidance to the vendors. When I'm talking to the vendors today, I see a lot of puzzled faces. I mean, they, they want to provide uh, capabilities, but they, they don't really know how. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, I want to do this software, but like how, where, like you talk CD, CI, CD, you talk about many things, but I don't really know what to do. This is the thing that also needs to change. Okay, so that's it. If you want to talk about it, I'm really open to having a discussion about it and uh, maybe, maybe helping you in, in, this, in, this, in this scope. We believe that this is a fundamental scope to talk about. Yeah, thank you very much.